There's a book I really like, which is written by the German systems psychotherapist Bert Hellinger called Zweierlei Glück, meaning two kinds of happiness. There's also an English translated version called Love's Symmetries. The first kind of happiness is a simple response to something which has happened in the family system, often it's a secret, where someone pays for the sins of some ancestor, unconsciously, with something bad happening to this person as well. So bad things are followed by more bad things. There's another kind of happiness, a deeper one, whereby insight and humility, the bad can be viewed of as a prize, and despite the ancestor's misfortune in life, life can be viewed as a gift, and good things can follow nevertheless, in honor of the ancestor's fate, and what they went through, which made it possible in the end that the person is here now. Tragically, most people follow the first kind, as it is easier, comes more natural, and it makes them bigger and more important, and they are happy doing it because they feel they belong to their family system. Can sometimes be seen in people with life-threatening illnesses, like cancer or Parkinson. These people, despite their horrible illnesses, seem surprisingly uplift and happy. Sometimes these people are also called brave. To illustrate this, I wanted to talk about Parkinson's disease and look briefly at two videos. One where Michael J. Fox is interviewed, and the other one where Alan Alda is interviewed. Okay, let's get started. What did you know about Parkinson's? Somebody's grandmother had it. I mean, it, it was not a thing that I noticed or thought about. It didn't enter into my world. I was a 29-year-old guy. Did the doctor know who you were? Yeah, and, I, and I, in fact, it's one of the few times in my life I felt like saying, do you know who I am? It's ridiculous, you can't. So it's of course very sad to see Michael J. Fox like that, especially I grew up with his movies. But now look at the interviewer. Her name is Jane Pauley. She's smiling. That's a sign of happiness. So she's looking at this poor guy, Michael J. Fox, and she's beaming. She's smiling over her whole face. Let's follow a little more. Tell me that. This was a case when I just thought it's preposterous that this is happening to me. His slurred speech muscle stiffness and tremors are the signature symptoms of the disease he said uh, you have 10 years left to work she's still smiling there's some things in the pipeline and he leavened it with a little bit of yeah a little bit of hope but um but it wasn't it wasn't enough for me it was i i felt very uh shocked by it things like degenerative yeah progressive no cure yeah no cure no cue and she smiles. Like dealt with how it affected me and I was concerned with me and progression of the disease. And she's still smiling. Find a cure. I like that poster. We don't just fund research, we fund results. Yeah, well, that's the idea. Well, that's pushing a billion. Pushing a billion, yeah. Pushing a billion. And it's based on, uh, predicated really on your impatience. Yeah. Well, I mean, as, as, as happy go lucky as I seem to be in as 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 it is as with this as I seem to be. I, I mean, it sucks. I hate it. So he says it sucks, but he also talks about happiness. I will come back to this, but she's again smiling. There are two things to take away from these videos. The first one is how other people react. So that's not a kind of duping delight because it's not asymmetric. That's more like when we get away with things. It's really pure happiness. And it's like malicious happiness. It's a bit like schadenfreude in German. And it indicates that some are happy to see other people's misery. Because based on statistics, we feel like we get then more likely away with things. Let's say if there's a plane crash somewhere. It feels a bit like it's less likely that we are going to be in a plane crash. Because it happened already to someone else. Similar with the diseases. A certain percentage of people will get cancer or Parkinson's. So if you now encounter these kind of people who have these serious diseases, it feels a little bit like the chances are lower now that oneself gets this. Of course, it's completely stupid, this kind of thinking. However, this is a response you see sometimes in people here as well. So that's one message here. And I, and I wish I wish I wasn't in this situation, but, but it's been one of the great gifts of my life that I've been in the position to, to... So he talks about the great gift of his life. This is the first kind of happiness people with these serious illnesses feel. So they are not miserable, they are surprisingly happy. To, to take my view of the suckitude of it and, 
and, and merge it with other people's view of the suckitude of it and, and try to find it, try to find it. In a sense, to have a chance to get better, they would have to realize what this means having these illnesses. It would be much more wise to go to a hospice or people on the deathbed with these illnesses and see how it ends. This might actually be like a wake-up call that they want to get really rid of this disease because they see what it really means, the full ugliness, how it all ends. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you've heard this a thousand times, but it couldn't have happened to a better person. What? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting used to that idea. What? Can you believe that? He sees a thinking pattern which already went wrong. Seeing it like a gift is crazy. It's really hard to believe. He's awaiting a horrible end. And this shows his upside down way of looking at the disease. Okay, let's look at the next interview. Alan Alda is with us this morning for an announcement that he wants to make. So good to have you here. Thank you. It's great to be here. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing great. You might. So again, here we see the happiness. You saw it in the previous shot. The happiness emitting from his face. And he says he's doing great. How twisted is that? This is the first kind of happiness. I'm, I'm doing great. You might be surprised to hear that when I, I tell I haven't said in public until now that I've been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And the reason that I want to talk about it in public is that it's, I was diagnosed three and a half years ago mm -hmm. and I've had a full life since then. I've acted, I've given talks. I help at the Alda Center for Communicating Science at Stony Brook. I started this new podcast. What was that diagnosis like when you got it? Well, it, I, I asked for a, a scan because I thought I might have it. Mm. It's almost like he wants to have it. He can't wait to have it. This is again, it's a twistedness. I read an article by Jane Brody in the New York Times mm -hmm. that indicated that if you have, uh, if you act out your dreams, mm. uh, there's a good chance you might, that might be a very early symptom that where nothing else shows. And the acting out of dreams, this is again, that's in the subconscious, there is some terrible event in the past. It's part of the family and the ancestors, and he doesn't even know about what this event might be, and it breaks out somehow. He has to somehow deal with it. It's part of the system, it bubbles up. And the fact that there is this event manifests itself in the violent dreams and acting it out. So there is this tormentor somehow. This is part of this family system, and he is fighting it. It's a bad event which caused all of that. By acting out your dreams, I mean, I was having a dream that someone was attacking me and I threw a sack of potatoes at them. What I was really doing is throwing a pillow at my wife. Wow. Uh, wow. wow. So, so what other, what other, what other oh, symptoms funny. did you start to notice? I didn't have any symptoms. The Nothing. doctor said, why do you want to scan? You don't have any wow. symptoms. And I said, I want to know if there's anything I can do. I want to do it mm -hmm. before things start to show up. And so months later, a little twitch in my thumb, you know, mm -hmm. and the, the thing I want folks to know, and this is not to shortchange people who are suffering with really severe symptoms, you know, symptoms can get very bad and their families can suffer. But somehow he doesn't realize that this will also happen to him. This is a paradoxical part. But in the very beginning, to be immobilized by fear and think the worst thing has happened to you, it hasn't happened to you, you still have things you can do. Yeah. I, I'm taking boxing lessons. <laughs> Three days a week, I read. Three times a week. Yeah. I do uh, singles tennis a couple of times a yeah. week. I march to Sousa music. <laughs> right. Because marching to march music. So look at his happiness. It's like he's on vacation. Almost like he doesn't realize that he's going fast towards a miserable end. He's completely blind. Again, second kind of happiness. Is good for, for Parkinson's. Oh. Did you have, but did you? This was interesting. To march music is good for, for Parkinson's. Oh. Did you... Here's again the personification. Parkinson represents a tormentor and he's closely connecting with it, which has to do with his past event. So saying it's good for Parkinson sounds almost like he's supporting his tormentor, very closely connected with him. Do you have, but did you, I mean, you talk about the initial reaction to this. Did you have a, an initial fear? You know, I was mainly helping my family not be worried. So no fear. 
because it, it's common for us all to go to the worst yes. thought. Yes, of course, sure. But well, it what's goes interesting there. is this is, diff- this is a disease that's different for almost everybody who has it. Huh. Mm-hmm. There are some common symptoms, but mo- mostly everybody's different. And each day is These different excuses, from the next. of course. One day you wake up, you think, oh, huh. it's over. Oh, it's funny. The next day it's back a little worse. Right. Mm. You, you don't know what it's going to be. But the main thing is there's stuff you can do. It's like a puzzle to be solved. Mm. Mm-hmm. What do I have to adapt to to carry on a normal life? So puzzle is again a very positive thing. <laughs> and and and, and I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoy, I enjoy it. solving puzzles. <laughs> yeah. Really so he's enjoying it. It's it's huge. It's something good. I mean, it's not. Fun. Well, you have a remarkably optimistic can-do attitude. Of optimistic can-do about a disease that a lot of people are scared about, but also angry when they have these yeah, diagnoses. That's, but that's true. your staff says you have displayed no signs of I'm anger. I'm glad to hear from my. <laughs> that. Pure happiness. No, that's encouraging. That's good. You don't know how Amazing. You're the outside. You know? <laughs> I mean, really. But I'm not angry. I'm, how I'm are you not angry? Because it's a challenge. You know, you you got to cross it's the like, street. There it's like he's coming. a fool. How do you get across the street? You don't just sit on the pavement and say, "Well, like." He doesn't see the ugliness the right in front of him. You find a way to do it. Yeah. People have all kinds of things. So Some he would have to like see his ugliness to be yes. turned away. <laughs> he can't change that. But, no, he he has, has to see the severity of it. To that, yeah, they're going to be unhappy. So I mean, I mean, they're even they look very puzzled. Did you see that? Can you see how puzzled they look? They all turn their head somehow. They're trying to get a perspective on it. They're contemplating what he's saying and not really believing it. Fascinating. I mean, there are there are people who have really severe symptoms that they have to face, mm-hmm. and that's difficult. It's not so difficult to to say, oh look, I got I got a little bit of a shake. So so you got a shake. Again, not realizing the severity of it. Center. If he were able to follow the second kind of happiness, he wouldn't grin like that. He would feel much smaller in humility. Said he got away not having the disease, said he can treat life as a gift and has to make something out of it. It's a much smaller way forward. <laughs> but not such a glorious way. The message that there are things you can do, you can learn about things yeah. and not follow quackery, mm. but find out what real science is coming up with that, that helps. It helps to keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. It helps the to move the rhythm. It's a traditional medicine which can't solve these problems. I think particularly challenging about this so far for you, what has it been? You know, I think... So he's hesitating. He doesn't even know what has been challenging. Of course, if they would talk to his family, they would talk very differently about it. My saying something about it publicly today is going to make one thing a little easier. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to worry. While I'm trying to say something else, I'm not going to be thinking, is my thumb on a life of its own? Mm, right. Yeah. You know, it hasn't stopped my life at all. I've, I've had a richer life than I've had up until now. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Well, his nerve cells in his brain are dying and he says he hasn't had a richer life than now. Okay, in summary, I talked about two kinds of happiness based on this German systems psychotherapist, Bert Hellinger. Um, the first kind of happiness is a very crude one where you pay for something which happened in the past to family members you are connected to at a subconscious, difficult to understand level even. So that almost questions free will at some level. The other kind of happiness is much more humbled and it treats a bad thing in the past as a price one has to agree to pay for and then takes life as a gift and go forward and do good things. But that's what very few people can do. Okay, I hope you liked the video and talk to you next time. Bye.